So you had come down for uh, when you were 15? I was done when I was 15 and uh, it was brilliant. I really enjoyed it and I know it was 11 years later when I came back, but uh, when I'd made my mind up that I was wanting to go, this would have been, Liverpool would have been my first choice. And I'm not saying that retrospectively, I'm saying it because I knew what it was like when I came. And when I came back down, uh, it was just exactly the same. The humility, the humbleness of the people, the, the city itself was very similar to Glasgow with two teams, one good, one not so good. But, and then you've got the, the docks and the industry and the people, the sense of humour. And it was just it was just perfect fit for us. Liverpool were European champions and, and Keegan had just left for Hamburg. So it was a, a lot of pressure with the, uh, a British record fee, 440,000. Yeah, but that was including 10% back. So the government, <laughs> if somebody said you were overpriced, you can blame them, no me. Um, but for me, it wasn't a problem. I was, they were picking you for who you were, and that's all you had to be, just be yourself when you come back. So that's all I could try to be, just I can't be anybody else. So be yourself and we'll see what, what happens. And it was fantastic the first day you get in training and the players are all looking forward to the season and looking to win something again. And after having won the European Cup and the League Championship and just missing out on the treble with the, the result at Wembley, I thought, Jesus, this does me fine, this. They've still got the hunger and the desire. And, that's, for me, a very important part of me leaving Glasgow was to try and get a European medal, and they just got it. And there was also some people would be thinking, well, they've won it once, they're no bothered. But once they want something, once it, you get a great taste for it. It's even better when you do it the second time. So you, uh, Liverpool reminded you of Glasgow a lot. I mean, did you know much about Liverpool football club's history? Yeah, well, I was down when I was 15, and uh, the history is one thing. The immediate reaction you get when you come down and how welcoming the first team players were and um, how comforting it was to be in the city. and it just You just felt very comfortable. But at 15, I was a wee, bit, a wee bit young, maybe frightened to move away from home. So when you were arrived at Liverpool, were you aware of this mythical boot room? and the characters involved in it, you know? I would have thought when I was 15, the boot room was still there. Although, 15, you're not going to venture in it. Jesus, when you're winning European Cups, you didn't venture into it either. It was a fantastic place for the, for the staff to be, to have somewhere to go after training and somewhere where they could mix and talk and get things done. And it was an iconic place. The furniture, you wouldn't get it sold second hand, right? But, so it's not about the luxuries, it's not about the fit out it's got, it's about the people in it. And the people in it were unbelievably knowledgeable uh, about what football was and should be and how it should be done. And they just went in there and that was them. They chewed the, they chewed the fat in there and they, they, you can't say they did badly. But they were very humble, there wasn't a, and that's the thing, it goes right through the, the history of Liverpool Football Club. The humility of the people. It's, and, and they were like that. And they just used to get in and have a, obviously have a good chin wag, but there was always a bit of liquid involved as well. Uh, and you would go in there only if you had to go in. No, because you weren't welcome, because it wasn't your place. Yeah, but would you say the founding principles then of the of the boot room characters, what was the...? Uh, a fantastic knowledge of football, a great knowledge of life, uh, a great knowledge of what it should be and what's happened. They were so astute, really conscious and aware of what was happening. They saw everything, remembered everything that went on in the training ground. On the training ground, they come back and they big A4 books Every day they wrote down every detail that happened that day. So when we started training, who trained, anybody was injured, what the injuries were, they could do the whole lot. The whole lot was there in, in that encyclopedia. And it was all transferred from there into that book by themselves. 
uh, in terms of the success, uh, you say you know they were very humble men, but they, they didn't like superstars or such, did they? In terms of people being big-headed or whatever, did did you ever come across that side of them? There was not one player in the dressing room that would be arrogant or big-headed. We were lucky. Big Big Al for the three jokes. Big Al signed in uh, April. I signed in August, and Graham signed in the. Uh, January. But as soon as we walked in the dressing room, we were walking into something that's been so successful, but so well organised, so real, so together that it wasn't true. And I mean together, just we being on, on the pitch, they were really together. And they weren't after headlines. They were after medals. That, that suited me fine. And there's nobody could have come in there because everybody in had already been set in their ways with the likes of when Shanks was there, Cali, Smitty, they all came in, Clem, and they they set the tone for us. So you, when you come in, even if you wanted to be arrogant and big-headed, you couldn't be, because you wouldn't be allowed to be. And there was nobody ever come in and, and thought anything other than this is, we're all for one and one for all. So the whole ethos of the club had started with Bill Shankly as a you know a proud Scotsman. Uh, you think it all emanated from his his mentality, his natural enthusiasm, the whole uh, period of success. Obviously, Shanks was the one that was. I mean, anybody that's got any allegiance towards Liverpool, in whatever way, shape, or form that is, he just looked back, and he's a guy that everybody's got to thank, even the ones that. Uh, succeeded him and was hugely successful. Bob, Joe, Ronnie, anybody, even right up to present day. It's because of Shanks and because of what he did and the things that he installed. He he got the people involved in working in the backroom staff alongside himself. They went on and they produced people and they produced results and they also set standards that uh, were right and they set principles as well. So for, for everybody, it's down to Shanks, or maybe you should say it's down to the person that appointed Shanks. Because without Shanks, Liverpool wouldn't have been the same. So, Shankly comes in 1959. Liverpool are in the second division, in the doldrums, really. He's the catalyst for everything, really, from 1955. So, for 25 years later, Liverpool are still at the top, still after decades of success. Uh, do you think there'll ever be a management team like that, a boot room like that, who could just succeed each other and carry on the success? Uh, I think most of the time now, when somebody leaves a football club, they've not got a structure set in place, have they? I mean, Shanks' structure was set in place for looking after young boys, even if they were there, not just the first team, but looking after, certainly when I was done at 15, it was apparent to me that he the care he cared about some of the young boys. Um, so nowadays, the, 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 somebody gets a sack, this whole structure's gone. So I, th I think it's a different it's a different ball game now. I think that you have your first team, and then you have the academy or the twenty ones or twenty threes, whatever they're right. You have so there's, there's two sections. Right, obviously the closer, the 21s, 23s, they should be a bit closer to the first team than maybe the kids are. But I think you have staff for that department and you have staff for the development of the kids. Because there's no, con there's no continuity in it anymore. I mean, most of the, if a new manager comes in, there's five or six people out the door, there's five or six people coming in, and that's only staff. They bring their own staff, don't they? They bring everything. Which is, in a way, it's understandable. If you want to employ somebody, he won't, you don't mind him bringing his own people. But Shanks came in, he came in in his own, I think. Rotty, Ruben would be there, or coming with him, and Joe would be there. Ronnie was a player there, so he'd be there. So the same went right along the line for a good while. Uh, and it worked really well for us. And. I would have thought it's a lot different than what it was back then. A lot different. 